Hi everyone, this is Rich Carlton. I'm here today with Jesse Barnum for 360 Works. And Jesse has been talking smack at DevCon about every year. every year, but you know, like, oh, you know, I got this really cool software that everyone has to have. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> so we're here to actually investigate his claims that he has really cool software that we need. Today I'm bringing it. You're bringing it. So what are we doing? What What is the new amazing thing? Okay, so the main thing I'm going to be focused on with you today is 360 Deploy. 360 Deploy. And the purpose of 360 Deploy is to solve the age-old problem of how do we make our development changes on one FileMaker database, but merge that with our production data that's hosted for the client on another FileMaker database. Okay. And so this is actually something that works? It's not quite for sale yet. I've got a few kinks I'm still working out, but yes, it works well enough that I can show it to you. Wow, that's outstanding. So by the time people see the video, they'll know that they can probably go out and buy it. The goal is sometime in August. We're in July right now, so I've got about 30 days to wrap this thing up. Cool. Well, let's check it out. All right. We're looking at your screen here. What are we seeing here? Is this okay. the, the 360 deploy? So, so it's a tool, but it's also a FileMaker file. Yes. It's actually a, a three-part installation, kind of a three-part process. Okay. So what I've got, let me first show you kind of what my files are. I've yeah. got this inventory database okay. on my... Uh, this is on my development server. Okay. This window here, Jupyter. Jupyter is the name of our Amazon server in Virginia. Okay. I'm actually tethering to it right now because the Wi-Fi is unusable here in the conference exhibit area. Okay. So it might be a little pokey while I'm doing some of these demos because I'm tethering through my phone. Oh, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, we're going from Phoenix to Virginia for this development server right here. Right. Okay. This is where I'm going to make all of my changes. Okay. Notice that I've got three records in this database. Okay. Also notice that my next serial number on my item reference code here is four. Four, okay. Uh, this is my production database. Okay. I've got nine different databases in here, products from all my favorite companies. Uh, and so this next serial number in here is 10. Is 10. And I've got nine records. Okay. At the moment, these databases look just like alike because, you know, Right, but obviously we'd have one that we're doing development on. Yes. And, and so all the customers or our employees or whatever we are, they're using the production one, right? The one so, on the right here. So right is production, left is theoretically our development one. Correct. Yeah. So let's do some, quote, development. So I'm going to just change the theme here to this. And I don't really have a whole lot of useful stuff to do here, so I'll just add a few fields. So we change the theme, and we're going to add a field. Okay, yeah. great. Well, I mean, well, we could do anything we want. We could do we could relationships, new, tables, new TOs, relationships. It doesn't scripts really, too. Scripts, scripts yeah. Okay, so yep. so so we, we made changes. Do. Now, what do we do? So basically, the idea at this point is that we've tested the development version. It's ready for prime time. Yes. Now we want to take our changes that we've made from a development standpoint and push them live. Push them live. Push them live. So and how yep. do we push it live? And Push, push them live with all the data from our production server. Well, of course. I mean, yeah, if yeah. I, I mean, the whole idea of pushing it. I mean, this Obviously. is a part. This is frankly the part of the FileMaker platform that's always kind of been weak since forever. Yeah, and I, I would say sucks, but I'm not supposed to say sucks in video, so it's weak, right? And the idea is that you have to take the data out of the old file, import the new file, adjust the serial numbers. It's painful. So yeah, it's always been a, a hassle with FileMaker, especially for like vertical market solution providers right. that pretty much need to you know, design this huge process to make this simple for their customers to be able to deploy their solutions. Right, right, right. Let's talk about what we do here. The first thing that's happening is that we are installing a 360 deploy application on each server. I've already done that step. Okay, it's on the production server or on the deployment? Both. or the, oh, It's on both servers. It's on both. The purpose of that application is strictly for file manipulation. During, okay. this, during this go live deployment, we're going to be downloading, uploading, moving, renaming, closing, and opening files on FileMaker server. Sure. None of which you can do remotely through API calls. So we stick our own application on the server so that it can do that for us. Ah, okay. So that's how you start to extend the capabilities with your own tool. Exactly. Okay. And, and that's kind of the magic part that you can't easily do on your own is kind of the whole file manipulation. Yeah, I mean this deploy issue is really kind of it's been it's been the big issue to filemaker's defense as you 
wanted to point out is that they have said in a very loose way, they've said that the direction of the company is to improve the ability to migrate data and to make it more modular, right? They're definitely aware of the issue. Yeah, they're aware of the issue, but this is the first tool I've seen to really, really help us with this specifically, and it's ready basically now. If you're watching yes. the video, this is a product that's available now for you to get. This works right now. It's it's There's still a little polishing before it's working well enough to sell, but it works right now. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So, I've made my changes. I've installed my uh, 360 Deploy app on both my production and my development server. Now I'm ready to open. Oh, and I've also got a plugin installed, our 360 Deploy plugin. Okay. This only needs to be installed on the machine where I'm actually doing my deployment. I don't need it on my servers. I don't need it on my users. Perfect. I just need it on the machine where I'm going to do the deployment. Okay, cool. And it automatically gets installed using the install uh, plugin script step here, so you don't need to manually install it. It just okay. opens when you okay. open this FileMaker database. So this FileMaker database is the one that we ship. Okay. Uh, I'd like to clean it up a little bit before it's finalized, but this is what we've got right now. Yeah, but I mean, that's pretty straightforward. The yeah. interface isn't bad. That's fine. So right. you've identified the development, the production. Okay, great. Uh, and so now on my setup, the first thing that we recommend doing is creating an account in this database with the same username and password as some account in my production databases that I want to import with. So ideally, both production and development database would have that same admin account? It could be any account as long as it's got full access. Okay, good. And we're going to create another account in this file with the same username and password. That way it skips all the password problems. Right. If it's, if, if it's asking for password, that's a real fast way of losing track where you're at and getting distracted. Right. So go and ahead. We really want this to be a one-button deploy. That would be great. One-button deployment. Maybe you should call the product that. that one-button one, deploy. That, that might be an even... Yeah. I, <laughs> now I wish we had named it that. Yeah, I know. All right. So that's our uh, creating the account. The next thing we do is we choose our database that we want to sync. Yep. I've already chosen it, but I'll do it one more time so you can see what the process is. Okay. So uh, what... And so I'm getting a list. This is using the application that we installed on our development server to go get a list of all the database names. Okay, so all the databases. So we're going to identify mm -hmm. our... So I want my inventory database. Okay. Um, and we can support multiple file solutions. Okay. I've only got one file in this particular case. Yeah, I'm big on one file solution. If at all possible, it makes life so much easier. I agree with you. I think the separation model is very popular. But if this tool is the right answer for everybody, then maybe the separation model is not as needed. Yeah, exactly. I'll I mean, that's what, hate one reason why I really dislike multiple file solutions, you're constantly wrestling, especially on a deployment issue. It just makes, yeah. So. And on iOS, it's really hard to manage uh, yeah. file solutions. Um, so I've chosen my database that I want to sync. Now we get to the interesting parts. This yep. is where I'm actually generating my import script. Okay. So I'm going to do a copy and paste operation. That put a generic script on my clipboard. I'm going to okay. paste it into my development file. Okay. I want to stop here and point out that all the changes I'm making are only on my development file. Okay. I need. I don't need to make any changes at all to my production data. Okay, great. Which is great if I'm a vertical market provider with 100 deployed applications out there. Yeah. So I go to my script workspace, and I paste that script from my clipboard. So it built a script for us. We pasted it in. This in itself is fairly new in the world of FileMaker, really being able to copy and paste scripts and move them in a meaningful way. Yes. Yeah. And, and we do that actually using the plugin. Wow. Because our plugin lets us put that stuff onto the native FileMaker clipboard. Wow. So we've got two scripts here. This script is our generic script. This mm -hmm. is boilerplate. It's the same in every database. Okay. All it knows how to do is go and gather all of our scripts and or all of our fields and tables and serial numbers. Right. Our second one, which is the, going to be the interesting one, is currently blank. We're going to come back to that one in just a second. So we come back to here. We've done that step three. Now we go to step four, copy the script steps. Now that's the thing that generated the custom script specifically for the solution and put it on there. Ah, okay. So now we get to paste script, the second script. Yes. Okay. So now that's been cha changed. Now, if I had multiple tables in this single file, that'd be okay? Yeah. Oh, we don't care how many tables there are. Yeah, the script takes that into account. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, and, and let me just, actually, I should have spent a little bit more time on that script. Let me show you. This is definitely customized for the solution. So we can see, for instance, here's where we're importing this particular table. Here's this table. Yeah. Uh, and so you can see, and here's this table. So it's it's created a customized section for each table. It knows what all the fields are, knows what all the serial number na numbers are, knows what all the tables are. It writes that import script for us. That was the entire setup process. We're done.
Wow. Uh, all that's left to do is to actually run the deployment process. So I've got my three record development database. I'm going to close this because I do need to close the files for this process to run. Okay. I've got my nine record production database. I'm going to close okay. that. Click my green button to deploy. Are you sure? Yes. So what's going to happen now is it's going to download an empty clone of the database from my, from my development server. It's going to upload that clone to my production server. It's going to import all the data from my old production file to my new empty clone. And then it'll close my old production database, move it to a, an archive timestamp folder, rename my empty clone to the correct old name, and then open that back up. So when it's done, we're completely ready to go. And so open this the is the whole thing. I mean, it download is. the file, archive the old one, load the new one, and it's running. It's running and ready to go when we finish. Wow. That's why I, I love your name, One Button Deploy. Yeah, that One really Button Deploy. That is what's, what this is. We're done now. Really? This is finished. Wow. I'm going to open this file up. And so now notice we've got our nine records. Whoa. We've got our changes to our list. What about the field I defined? Is that in there? We've got our high Richard field. Oh, my goodness. If we look at our serial number, notice our serial number is 10. So we automatically stored yeah. all the serial numbers from our production files and used the set next real serial script step to set them here. So... I guess the question would be is that if you had 100,000 records, it would take longer. Yes. This is definitely doing an import, and so it will be constrained by however long it takes to import all of your records into your But still, client. because of the low maintenance... I mean, this is so easy to run late at night. It's hands-free. You click it, it. It closes the file for a little while while it runs, and then it finishes, and you're, you're totally done. And now, for those of you who are around and seeing this, I mean, last year... We, I guess it was last year, we did the video on the clustering, right? Yes. We did the video on the cluster. I was blown away by the whole clustering and the data replication and all that, which, and that's working just that's fine. That's working still. great. We've got customers doing that. Wow. So then this is a legit deployment. It actually makes the whole idea of production and development servers a viable option, the FileMaker platform, which... Normally, it hasn't been viable. That's right. And watch this. Now that I've done this setup, I'm going to just do one last thing here. I'm just going to make one more change here. Um, where did, where's my themes? Change theme. I'm going to change it to something else again. And now, because I haven't changed any fields or tables, I don't need to do anything except hit my button again. And it's just going to run the whole thing through. Now, I've done... I mean, the setup wasn't hard at all. So you're, you're redeploying it again. I'm redeploying it ag so, again. So normally in real life, we wouldn't do a two for a redeploy. That's Probably not within five minutes of each other unless you really screwed something up. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Speaking of screwing stuff up, uh, I'll show this to you as soon as it finishes. But every time we run this, we create a timestamp folder in the FileMaker server documents directory, and we uh. move all of your old production files into there. So if you do screw something up, either because something went wrong with the import process, or you maybe you made a programming change and the client's calling you saying, hey, this table occurrence is broken, the button's not working for anybody, everyone's freaking out on me. The file, so that's done. That just deployed that new version to yeah. the server. Um, all of my files, are in this little timestamp folder in my do documents directory in the FileMaker server. So right here at 14, 15, 35, which is just a minute ago, yeah. here's my inventory database from before I made any changes, and I can easily put that back if I need to. So it's a really, really easy rollback process if we need to. Now, if the, if the development file and the production file are on the same server, that's still not a problem. Currently, as of version 1, we require the file names to be the same. And you can't have multiple copies of the file with the same name on Got the it. same server. So really, you do need a legit separate server, but, sort you know. Of, sort of. There is, uh, uh, to answer your question slightly differently, we do have the ability to have your files not on a server, but local on your laptop. So I prefer to work on a server for all of my development. Yeah. And but yeah. if you don't. And if you're working offline a lot and you have the stuff just, you know, you're working on single user files, we can also deploy from just a folder that contains all your databases. All right. Well, I'm blown away. I don't, I don't know if this will ever receive an award from FileMaker as the most amazing product, but I think this would be a can another candidate 
You've won awards for MirrorSync before, we, right? We have, and DocuBin. And DocuBin. And uh, so all I can say is that this is truly amazing, um, and it works. And at no time during this video did we cook the video, or did you give me $10,000 to make an amazing <laughs> video and, and lie profusely? This is a legit straight-up thing, and I'm blown away. That's why I always tell people when they talk to me and see me in videos, you know, I'm not, I'm not the smartest guy out in the FileMaker community. I'm just kind of one of the most pro, prolific. And there's people that I hang out that are much smarter than I, like Jesse. I like it when they make awesome new tools that really extend the platform. People like 360 Works, frankly, are what make the platform bearable. You know, with the with the plugins. You know, and there's other vendors out there help. I mean, I have high high opinions of the productive guys, high opinions of Todd Geis and his crew. The there's guys. some handful of companies that really drive us forward. This is one of those products. Thank so you. So I want to say thank you. Awesome. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, Richard.